Welcome back everybody, this is Dave the Gamer. Today I wanted to make you a guide for anybody just starting out in WoW and you know, you're just leveling up, or even if this is for an alt account, I wanted to make 20 different ways that you can make tons of gold before your max level. Now some of these ways you're, I mean you could use even at max level to make good gold. Um, some of these are known, some of these aren't. So the first five I'm gonna go over is about professions. Then I'm going to do 10 on different mobs that you could grind and then five on five tricks that, you know, are a little unknown. So make sure you stick around to the end to hear all of them. Starting off with the professions to make tons of gold, we're going to be looking at fishing. Fishing has great ways to make a very lucrative amount of gold. Uh, mainly what you're searching for is the stone scale eel and night fin snapper. Now both of them, the best fishing time to actually catch them is from 12 o'clock at night to 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that's when the highest rate of chance is. I'm going to pop a map up here that shows you all of the different locations and zones. Uh, the hashtag number is basically the minimum level you need to be able to go there and fish. And the other number is what level once you obtain that, that you're never going to miss the fish. Now for Tenaris, it's gonna be the best spot for the Stone Scout Eel. You come here nice early in the morning. I recommend coming here when you're 180 fishing or higher, and then you want uh, one of the fishing rods that give you plus 20, and then the bright bobber that gives you plus 75. So combined, you're gonna have a very low chance of missing the Stone Scout Eel. And you could be looking even at you know lower levels, you'd be looking at about 30, 40 gold an hour, no problem. We're going to take so for herbalism, where you're getting most of your gold since, you know, if you're level 35 or above, yes, you could get Black Lotus. The problem is, is if you're under level 40, you're not going to be able to get into the zones without getting killed by all the mobs. So if you're lower level, this is good for, you know, pretty much anything from like level 20 to up is if you go around the barrens and when you actually pick up the briar thorn in the mage royal, you have a chance at swift thistle, which is made for rogues uh, tea, and it sells for about a gold a piece. So you could take laps all the way around the barrens, picking up those herbs, and hopefully get the swift thistle, which is a nice, great extra chunk of change out of that. And then going into number three is actually mining. So mining the barrens, I mean, Personally, while I leveled, I was mining and herbalism because I didn't need any other, you know, you don't need tailoring or alchemy or really much of other things while leveling for the fact that you want the most gold to be able to afford that mount and to get ready for your epic mount when you do hit level 60. Uh, there's still so many people I've seen at level 60 that doesn't even have their epic mount. So you don't want to be that person, so start prepping now. Go the whole way around the barrens following the outskirts, and with following that, you're also going to run into gold ore and silver ore. Both ore sell on the auction house from 20 to 40 silver, uh, so it's great money. And um, later phases, you're going to see people start stocking up on TBC items, and those items are those, you know, gold and silver ore is going to be needed for jewel crafting. So number four, we're going to be looking at alchemy. So alchemy, um, it's tough for me to a little bit demonstrate here. I actually have a video I just made on 15 potions you can make, and I put 300 gold plus weekly. Realistically, um, once you start getting up there and a lot of uh, gold and you can invest a ton at a time, I'm making you know six, seven, 800 gold, and it takes me about an hour to a week. So, But at lower levels, what you can do, um, I would personally focus on potions that sell very quickly and the mats are cheap to obtain. Uh, so you can basically flip your money. You could start off with as low as you know, 10, 20 gold and within no time have 100 gold just passively sitting in town. The way I would do it, I would be making Elixir of Agility, Elixir of Giant, and Free Action Potions. Those three potions sell very fast, so you can get a fast return on your investment. I would start off with the ones that are really cheap to make and that you can sell hundreds of them a week. Number five, I'd be looking at engineering. Engineering is excellent as far as a gold source. I made a ton of gold while leveling doing this. And what I personally did is I bought solid stone and other mats needed to make the zapper charges. And I was making, you know, 50 silver to a gold per zapper charge I made. 
Also, I made the reflector trinkets, shadow and frost. I've sold a ton of each of them, and those it costs a lot more to actually be able to make those in 30 40 gold profit per one which is excellent so those might be a little bit more further into you know closer to 40 and you already have about 100 gold to play around with where zapper charges are great money to pick up start making so many guilds need those so moving on to the 10 mobs that you can farm under level 40 that you're going to net you a lot of gold help you get that amount we're going to first take a look at large venom sack that's going to be used a lot in aq and already you're seeing at least silver uh, 60 silver per one so when you come to the shimmering flats here in thousand needles you're looking for the scorpions they have a 13 percent drop chance on these and they're about a level 31 so these scorpions here are a great resource and there's tons of them all over the map so I would definitely come here to farm up a ton of large venom sacks. Number seven, Number we're going to be looking at the flame sacks. They sell for about 90 silver a piece. They make regular uh, fire protection potions. I find the best spot to farm them, especially at lower level, is going to be in Swamp of Sorrows. They have a 25% to drop them, and they're dropped off the Dreaming Whelps, level 36. For number eight, Elemental Fires. We're looking at these in Arathi Highlands. They have a 12% drop chance off the Burning Exile, level 39. Now, right where I'm at here, this they have, I think, about 10 or 15 different spawn locations. This is a populated area, so you are going to run into a lot of different people. And it definitely helps to be a class that's able to tag mobs fast, like a hunter or someone with an instant cast, just in case there are people here. I would recommend to come here early in the morning if possible. These sell for about three gold each. At lower level, you know, you're not gonna be able to kill them as fast. So you might only make, you know, 20, 30 gold an hour. But, you know, I mean, that's four or five hours to be able to have enough gold for your uh, regular amount. Bunch of them all surrounding this little pillars here. So I find standing up on one of these rocks here and shooting down on them is the most efficient way. Like I said, if there is other competition, since you are only, you know, say level 38, the 40 uh, you're not gonna be killing them super fast so you don't need to kill or tag a bunch of them but once you learn where they were killed at you want to like basically time it i think it's a five minute timer for them to respond so if you knew this one was the first one killed you want to be in this area to pick it off as soon as it spawns so i don't care how busy it is if you uh, learn their respawn like where they're going to respawn next you have a very high chance to beat out anybody even if they are level 60. moving on to number nine we're going to be looking at elemental earth another populated area but great gold per hour so these are going to be dropping into badlands level i think 36 to 39 you're looking for the lesser elementals which have a nine percent drop chance so there's four different spots for you to kill these you can kill up here down here over here and here these are the lesser ones i think these are like graders and regular ones a little bit higher levels uh, up here they actually have a great uh, drop rate they drop the solid stone that you're going to be using to make those zapper charges and just overall elemental earths are going to be spiking huge coming into phase five so you're easily able to sell them for three gold three and a half gold now say you're level 38 i could definitely see you making about 30 gold an hour here which is excellent still and taking a Taking a look at the actual spot here, as you as I zoom in, you'll see all the different spots. You have this whole area where you can farm them at. I think there's about eight or ten different spots. You can also come up into a little cove here, and in the cove there's even more. Same thing with uh, the elemental fires. You need to learn like where they were killed and which ones are going to be respawning next if you are battling against other people. Once again, come on nice and early in the morning. I always get, well, who can play in the morning? You're right. You, I mean, if you can't get up early in the morning, some of these spots aren't for you. These are for people that are, you know, getting in the wow. You could get on two, three hours before work in the morning. And some of the other spots, uh, like the flame sacks, the large venom sacks that I talked about, those aren't as farmed. Might be a little bit less gold, but you aren't willing to wake up early. So what do you expect? You can't get the best gold in the game and not put in a little bit of effort. So just being real, just being real. Let's look at looking at number nine. We're looking at hunting golden pearls. 
Now this method, it might require you, now if you're level 40 already and you're, you're looking to farm here, I think you could pull it off. If you're, you know, 38 to 40, I think this is higher to the 40 mark of the ones I've mentioned. Um, I would recommend partnering up with someone as these ones are level 42 to 44. But in this cave, in even Fairless, there's a ton of hate crest screamers that have a 44% chance to drop the big mouth clam. And inside the clam has a 0.5 chance to have a golden pearl that on a lot of servers are selling anywhere from uh, 20 to 40 gold, depending on your server. So this method could be good if your server's 40 gold, not as good 20 gold. And yes, I get the, the point of 0.5% chance is not very high, but you're getting so many of these clams. I find I typically average two to three of these in an hour, but that's on my level 60 mage. So a lower level, you might only be able to get, you know, one or two an hour. And then if you're splitting with someone, you might only be able to make about 20 gold an hour here would be my prediction. You do get a ton of cloth and grays off these and greens. So it's not a bad gold farming spot in general. See with these sorcerer hate crest and the guards, these ones are a little bit higher level, I think 34 or um, 44, 45. So this is where, I mean, if you're just a beast level 40, you could pull it off. I'd come here with another person, come on through here, clear this whole place out. Like I said, you're going to get a lot of great items out of here. And if you do get a golden pearl, excellent. You guys could split the gold and still, like I said, make about 20, 30 gold. So there's a ton of different mobs in here. So this is a nice little spot to actually come to. All right, number 11, 12, and 13 all revolve around Stranglethorn Vell. Now, number 11, you're looking at Elemental Waters. Right here on this little island here, I find a lot of people forget about this place. I tested this on uh, my level 60 mage, and I was getting upwards to 50 gold an hour. And right now, Elemental Waters sell for about 50 silver apiece. Uh, these mobs on here, which is the Lesser Water Elemental, level 37s, have 11% drop chance. I believe there's 25 different uh, spawn locations for them. So it's pretty great money, and like I said, that's 50 silver apiece. Phase 6, when they're used for the Greater Frost Protection, I could definitely see these going up to a gold apiece, which would skyrocket this. Taking a look at this island here, like I said, it is an excellent spot, pretty wide open. Uh, I personally farmed here, like I said, multiple times on my mage, and I rarely ever seen anybody even come to this island. So I think this would be a great spot, you know, level 35, the 40 spot. As you see, tons of different locations to actually kill these for. Number 12, the Cold Eye Ballistics. Uh, these mobs, I've when I was lower level, I was getting between 20 to 30 gold an hour farming these consistently. Uh, they have a, they just drop a ton of grays that vendor for excellent money. As you see, a really good spot to farm them is going to be right in this area. Other ballistics you're going to find up in here, not as good, but a little bit lower level. These ballistics are level 39, I believe. Yeah, uh, yeah 39 to 40. And like I said, you get a ton of great grays that vendor for a good bit of money. So highly recommend that spot. Uh, be careful with the cold eye ballistics these guys right here i believe they do a stun and i'm not sure a silence too but they do do a stun so you don't want to pull too many of them at a time just be careful when you are fighting them especially if you are you know closer to the level 40 mark and they're the same level moving on to number 13 we're going to be looking at the goblin rocket fuel recipe uh, specifically the violet rum so that is what we're going to be farming for as that is going to spike up in price as we get closer to aq and people need the goblin rocket fuel for the gates so let's take a look farming at farming them all along this coast here there's a couple different mobs that are going to drop them that i'm going to show you about they have a nine percent drop chance but they also have a high percent chance to drop the greens and cloth Right now, the Violent Rum is selling for 50 silver a piece. I could definitely see it going up to a gold. So this would be a great method. These are level 40 to 43. So if you come alone, I would highly recommend being closer to the level 40 mark or have a friend and you guys could split the gold. Even with a friend, I could definitely see you making about 20 gold an hour here. So looking here, the mobs that actually drop these are the Blood Cell 
uh, warlocks. There's all there's like four or five different types in here along these islands. So you could follow this the whole way down and kill all kind of different ones. The warlocks being one of the harder ones to kill because they do have a pet with them. And as you see here, a ton of different chests spawned here. And there's usually not too many people farming here. There is a quest line that comes through here, but not as many people are leveling. So you should be able to come here and farm out some good gold. Moving on to number 14, we're going to be looking at the Blood Fury Ambushers going for the Light Feathers. Now looking at the Light Feathers, you're going to best, I think some of the best drop rate to actually get them is going to be in Stonetown Mountain right here and you're looking like i said the blood fewer ambushers there's all kind of, there's like four different types that drop them about 41 percent chance to actually get them and on my server they're selling between 20 to 30 silver a piece mages eat up the light feathers for the zg croc pulls and everything else so you should have no trouble actually getting these sold i personally farm up a ton of them and then just private message a, a bunch of different mages and have no problem just unloading you know hundreds at a time to them like i said in these which is great these are only level 24 to 27. so this is perfect for as you're getting up to the higher levels getting closer to your mount you could come here spend instead of questing you might spend more time just grinding these out to almost level 29 level 30 just so you have a ton of light feathers and a ton of gold looking around here like i said you have the rogue feathers you have a ton of different ones. You do have to be a little bit more careful if you ever been to this area uh, for the fact that they are pretty dense. So you gotta watch pulling multiple ones. So I always just stay at the back and then pull them towards me. And if you do go through the middle, you are gonna run into a bunch of nice chests for that little extra gold. So I highly recommend this area. It has a lot of potential to make some great money below level 30, which I mean, you can't beat that. So for number 15, we're looking at the Mountain Yetis, which are in Hillsbrad Foothills, uh, specifically this cave right here. Now, if you are skinning, you're gonna get a great extra amount of gold off skinning these, but the main reason you're farming these is for large fangs. Now, they have a 10% drop chance on the large fangs, which are used for rage potions, and you're gonna see them being used up in uh, later phases even more as the content gets harder. Like I said, they drop the large fangs, they drop green items, you can skin them. The only issues I have been hearing about is there's a lot of bots that come here. So depending on your server, uh, that might not be as viable. Uh, but these are only level 33, so they're a great source of good, uh, good gold. And really not many people, there is two quest lines that come through here. Like I said, there's not too many alts, so I don't think you'll have to worry about this. But I would sit here and farm these for a while, get a ton of large fangs up. And then if you're already at the 100 gold and you've, you know, you've tackled a bunch of the other things I've mentioned, I would hang on to those large fangs and unload them into like early phase five, early phase six. Right now they're going for 20 silver, roughly 20 silver a piece on most servers. I could definitely see them going up to about 50 silver. Not many people, especially in phase six, are gonna to wanna to come back to these areas to farm large fangs. So while you're leveling, I would definitely stock up on these bad boys. So number 16 through 20, these are the ones that I think not many people think about. And I think you'll find these probably the most lucrative if you can pull them off correctly. Number 16, flipping gold. Obviously, you have to have a little bit of gold to flip the gold. So I would farm some of the mobs I spoke about, get up to you know roughly 20 to 50 gold, and then check out my video on uh, nine items that you can invest in for phase five and six. Even now, you could buy them up cheap and then sell them at the beginning of phase six, or even pick up some of the other mats and sell them now. So flipping gold is probably the easiest way to make gold. Doesn't make you, like you don't have to actually leave the main city to be able to make gold and then it starts to compound itself. So as you do start making gold, you start flipping it even faster. So that one might be a little known, obviously, but this one, I know nobody thinks about this one. Number 17, pretend to be a girl in need. So there's lots of desperate guys right now uh, on WoW. So let's be real. You need to make a girl character Get some, you know, easy girl lines and then just start asking for gold. 
be like, hey, I'm a girl. I need some gold to quest. You would be crazy to see how many people actually flock to you and just start handing you stuff because, you know, they, they have never talked to a girl before. So this method could be very lucrative if pulled off correctly. Number 18, telling jokes. You know, look up some good jokes. Maybe, maybe you're a comedian. Post it in org. Hey, I'm telling jokes for one gold a piece. Hell, you know, I'm bored. I have a bunch of extra gold. If someone had some nice jokes, I would definitely pay you a gold a piece. So, you know, brush up on, you know, being funny. Quit being weird. Number 19, use your mom's credit card. We all know you don't have any money. So how about you go talk to your mom, get her credit card, go on those Chinese websites and buy up some gold. Let's re let's be real though. Don't do that. Don't do that. But number 20, this one, this one will get you thousands. Become a beggar. I see tons of them. Well, not so much anymore, but go get you some bummy clothes, wear them in town, you know, look up noob lines on Google and go around. Start asking some of us rich people, hey man, I can't afford my mount. I'm too lazy to go farm. And uh, hey, I might toss you 50 silver. Hell, I'm, I might toss you gold if I'm feeling, you know, generous on that day. But I think those five, I don't think people use enough. So if you're a noob just getting into the game, want to have some fun, go around, test out those five. Realistically, test out the first 15 if you really want to get wealthy yourself. Now that you have these 20 items of success, what I need you to do is take a look up in that top right corner. After you buy that mountain and everything else, you need to start investing in those nine items now so you can become even wealthier when it comes phase five and six. And as always, guys, game on.